Today on Hands-On Photography, I have a interesting piece of hardware from the folks at Blackmagic. I've already spoken about one of their pieces of hardware that I thought it was, it was quite all right. It, it, was, it, was, it was better than I expected. This one here though, whoo, next level. Very, very interesting. Y'all stay tuned. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This episode of Hands-On Photography is brought to you by Melissa. Over 10,000 clients worldwide in industries like retail, education, healthcare, insurance, finance, and government rely on Melissa for full spectrum data quality and ID verification software. Make sure your customer data is up to date. Get started today with 1,000 records claimed for free at melissa.com slash twit. Hey, what's happening, everybody? I'm Matt Pruitt, and this is Hands-On Photography. Hope y'all are doing well. I'm unbelievable, as always. Today, I'm going to dive into a tool that I flat out love, and this is a tool for your video editing workflow, particularly if you're a DaVinci Resolve user. But yeah, let me just go ahead and just say it up front. I love this device. Well, what device am I talking about? Today, I'm going to take a look at the Blackmagic Design micro panel that is to be used with DaVinci Resolve. Okay, so let me explain what this is. What is the micro panel from Blackmagic? Well, actually there's a couple different panels from Blackmagic um, when it comes to dealing with DaVinci Resolve. We've already spoken about the speed editor, but now we're going to get into more of the color side of things. The speed editor was dealing with cutting and, 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 you know, assigning your clips and things of that nature. But this is more along the lines of color grading when it comes to these different panels. There's three different color panels, actually. And I'm only demoing one of them because I can't afford the, uh, the other ones. <laughs> well, I probably would afford the middle one, but it's not necessarily for me. But we have three panels. We have the the micro panel, we have the mini panel, and we have the advanced panel from Blackmagic. And these things range anywhere from $860 up to about, oh, well over $20,000. Woo, there, it, it could be quite expensive. But today I'm looking at the micro panel because I think this is more ideal for some of some of you, some of you here in the hands on photography community. And it's definitely ideal for me. Um, I'm definitely thinking long and hard about getting one of these to just add into my kit. Shout out to the folks at Blackmagic for sending this over to me to let me try it out and see if I like it and share my thoughts with you, the hands on photography listener. But, um, yeah, more about this device. This is a device that's clearly built more for the color page inside of DaVinci Resolve. And it, it has all of the the buttons and, and, and dials and knobs that you would associate with specific uh, panels and buttons inside of the DaVinci Resolve software. You have these three rotary dials here and you have these three trackballs here. And these all coordinate with lift, gamma, gain, as uh, far as the, the color wheels go inside of um, DaVinci Resolve. And then you have these trackballs to control the actual RGB perspective inside of those uh, color wheels. And you can also uh, hop into the offset color wheel. But to get to the offset color wheel, you have to hit a, an additional button right there that says, hey, offset. And this 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 device, it's not small. They call it the micro panel, but it, it's not small by any by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, if I zoom my camera out a little bit here, you can see that I have on my desk. The keyboard is right behind it. And my, you know, this is a Logitech MX Keys keyboard, standard size keyboard. And it's literally the same size from a length standpoint, but it is a thick beast of a piece of equipment. Uh, it's made of plastic and metal, weighs, mm, it's not quite 10 pounds, but it's getting up there. It is, it is a tank, absolute tank. And it connects via USB-C on the back of it. You don't need any type of like an AC power for just USB-C will work just fine here. So let me zoom back in on this there. There we go. All right, but again, you have these great buttons here. Everything is associated with something inside of the color page in uh, DaVinci Resolve. Now, 
Okay, so going back to the fact that you have three different versions of this this device, you have the micro, you have the mini, and you have the advanced. The difference is the bigger those those panels get, the more functionality inside of the DaVinci Resolve color page you will have. Um, there are some things missing in particular on this micro panel. Um, only one of them really seems to be a, a bit of a nitpick for me, but for the most part, it's okay in my experience. And that's particularly because I'm able to sit my keyboard directly in front of it. And if I need to do a quick keyboard shortcut, my keyboard is right there. And it's not necessarily out of the way where I'm reaching all the way to the left or reaching all the way to the right, anything like that. It is a really, 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 really nice device. So what I want to do now is just pause for a quick second and thank this week's fine sponsor. And then we'll come on back and take a look at the actual ins and outs in using this device in DaVinci Resolve. This episode of Hands-On Photography is brought to you by Melissa. Melissa, a leading provider of global data quality, identity verification, and address management solutions, has announced the availability of its 2023 Melissa Solution Catalog. This catalog highlights Melissa's comprehensive suite of solutions and services that help keep customer data clean, current, and enriched for the greatest insights and most efficient business practices. Developed as an industry resource for database administrators and developers alike, this catalog highlights tools that clean, verify, update, dedupe, and enrich customer data. Capabilities can be implemented at any point in the data chain and are designed to ensure all your global, quote, people data, <laughs> such as addresses, names, phone numbers, and emails, make sure it's all validated and updated and standardized. Deployments are flexible and available in on-premise web services, secure FTP processing, and SaaS delivery options. Yeah, pretty cool stuff. Bud Walker, VP of Enterprise Sales and Strategy of Melissa says, quote, over our 37 year history, Melissa has helped more than 14,000 organizations around the world and across multiple industries proactively manage the quality of their data. Our annual solutions catalog illustrates why we are the address experts and offers the full scope of smart, sharp tools to help organizations proactively maximize the inherent business value of customer contact data. End quote. Since 1985, Melissa has specialized in global intelligence solutions to help organizations unlock accurate data for a more compelling customer view. Melissa has ranked number one across overall enterprise, mid-market and small business segments in various categories such as price, reporting and ease of use. Melissa continually undergoes independent security audits to reinforce his commitment to data security, privacy and compliance requirements. They are SOC 2, HIPAA and GDPR compliant. So, you know, your company's data is in the best hands Boy, all of that makes a big difference. Now, make sure your customer contact data is up to date. Get started today with 1000 records clean for free at Melissa.com slash twit. One more time. That's Melissa.com slash twit. And I appreciate Melissa for supporting hands on photography. Okay, so now let's go ahead and hop into DaVinci Resolve and just work out using the the Blackmagic micro panel for doing some color grading. All right. So here inside of DaVinci Resolve, this is the color page and this is some sample footage that I got from one of my friends that shot on a uh, Sony A1. I was I asked if she could shoot some footage for me um, for a project that I've been working on. And this is a model that was on the site there uh, for that shoot. So as you're looking at this, this is a bit of flat, you know, log uh, uh, S log three footage. So it doesn't look very good right now. It, it definitely needs some some color correction and some color grading just for taste, if you will. Uh, so how would I go about that? Of course, I would have to start adding, you know, more nodes over here on the right hand side in my node tree to get started. But if I switch my camera here to the micro panel, there's a bunch of buttons here on the right hand side, but there isn't a button that says, um, let me add a node. You know, we have grab still, we have previous node, we have next node. Uh, we can even 
play through the footage if we want. If I just hit this little play button, it'll play through the footage like so. Um, everything's there, but adding a new note, hmm, it's not there. So that means you would need to upgrade to the next version of the panel for the color page. So that's a bit of a nitpick, but eh, I can I can live with it. Why? Because my keyboard is just right here and I have some shortcuts set up. It's very, very easy for me to just add a new node just by doing, you know, Alt S or or um, Option S if you're on the Mac to add the, the next node there. Um, so let's go ahead and just dive into some of my actual structure here because this is two nodes I need to add. So let me add another one here and I'm going to go very quickly here. Uh, this one's going to be my primaries. OK, and this node is going to be my color space transform number one. OK, um, and then we will hop over to the effects add a color space transform because this is S log three footage. So we need to change this to uh, Sony. Let's see, that's the wrong one. I hit the wrong one. There we go. <laughs> Input color space should be. There we go. S log three. And then the output color space, we will make this just standard rec 709 like so. And gamma 2.4. Gamma 2.4. There we go. All right. So we are in a decent spot from from a color correction standpoint here. This footage looks really, really good because I did the color space transform. That's a whole other discussion. We can talk about that at another time. So now let's just go ahead and take a look at the footage and, you know, again, make sure everything just sort of bounces out correctly. And for the most part, this is good. Um, but what if the highlights were a little bit, you know, overexposed for me? All I had to do is just go to my my the furthest wheel on the right here. This is associated with the gain option right here in DaVinci Resolve. So if I were to to roll this to the left like so, you'll notice it starts to pull down the highlights. OK, notice how the the, the scopes are moving over there on the right hand side of the screen. And that's only affecting the highlights. And if I want to take a look at working with the shadows and bringing those shadows down just a touch, because again, looking at my scopes, we've talked about scopes before and how you should read them. My shadows are they're they're raised just a little bit. So I'm going to pull them down just a little bit. So I'll just go over here to this left wheel, this left wheel on the primaries and just pull it down ever so slightly to where it's a good fit for me. Yeah, see, that's already looking better and it's giving me some nice contrast already. Now, granted, now it's just a touch. It looks a little bit underexposed, just a little bit. So we can just pull the midtones or the gamma. Pull that up a little bit like so. Not hard. Or if we want to just take a global um, perspective on it, we just hit this offset button here inside of Resolve and turn the furthest right wheel. This is the one that's going to control the offset. So we just do it like that. You know, of course I went too far, but just play around and get a feel for what's going to look right for your project. And I like this. Everything is so tactile. I love how this feels. These dial, th th these dials they're so smooth to, to work with and if i wanted to get into changing the actual color temperature um, you use the actual track balls in the center of it and they're really 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 smooth i mean there's some serious ball bears on the inside of these and if i just want to make this a little bit warmer instead of having to get my mouse and just click and drag like this and end up dragging way too far and it looks like crap I don't need to do that. I can just use touch. So if you watch right here in the, in the center of this offset wheel, I'm just going to warm it up by moving this center dot to, you know, more of a warmer color. And it's very easily adapting the display. And of course I went too far, but I can just dial it back with ease, just like so. Not 
man, and I just stack them, love this. And if I'm not wanting to work with these particular dials and, and, and uh, trackballs, I have other options up here at the top to consider. We have our contrast, pivot, mid-level detail, color boost, saturation and shadows and highlights. All of this is up here. So it still gives you a very, very tactile feel. So let's take the shadows again. And I'm going to pull the shadows down with this knob like so. OK, and then I'm going to go back because I think this is a little too warm. So let's dial this color temperature back just a little bit. Get it in a better space for us. I want it to warm it up, but not too much. That's looking good. That's looking good there. All right. Now, another thing to add contrast to to an image here would be to use the curves tool inside of DaVinci Resolve. And if I move myself around here, you'll see that there is a curves tool right here in the middle of the screen, you know, and I could just point on it and and, and add some points to it like that and pull it down, just give it decent contrast. I could do all of that with the click of a mouse. Unfortunately, this functionality is not available inside of the um, micro panel. The advanced panels do have curved curve tools and in, uh, built into them. So you have to step away from the, the panel this time, grab your mouse and do what you need to do there. I can live with that. It is again because you're looking at the workspace. The workspace has everything right here. <laughs> everything is right there. The keyboard's there. The mouse is there. The panel is right here in front of me. No big deal. I will. I will. I could deal with that. Now, other colorists, you no, know, maybe they're, they're not too happy about that, but I'm totally fine with that. And again, if I want to play through the footage, you know, let's just back up on it a little bit. You know, maybe I'm thinking oh, something's not right Uh, this. I need to find a better hero frame. And I literally can just play back and forth without having to go to the space bar or without having to go to the interface up here and hitting play and back and all of that good stuff. It's 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 just it just works. OK. Like so. All right. So now let's say we were getting into some selective uh, color adjustments. I want to add a whole different node. So let's move my little on screen display here because not using the curve tools, but I want to add a new node. So I'm just going to hit control S or alt S, sorry, control S saves alt S and option S gives you a brand new node. And I want to make this something, make this node focus on our skin like so. So I'm going to go in here I'm going to grab a qualifier. Let me move this out of the way so you can see what I'm doing here. Let's grab a qualifier like so. Grab our skin. Nice looking key. Shift H. So that shows me it's got all of her skin quite nicely because that's all I want to affect. Right there. It looks pretty good. Like that. OK, so that looks good. Now I am basically going to work only on her skin. So let's say her skin is just a little too warm because I warmed up the whole image. I can just take it back on this node and just cool it off like so. But I'm going to go really, really, really extreme just so we can see here in the video. Notice she's starting to turn blue there. OK, and I'm thinking, all right, cool. I fixed her skin. So now I can go back to this primary node up here. But I don't necessarily have to move my hand off the keyboard. I literally can just just go to the panel here and just hit previous node. And it takes me back to my primaries node and allow me to work on that even more so. Um, where the again, with all of the different knobs at the top, changing the saturation, changing the color boost if I want. You know, the color boost is like vibrance inside of Lightroom it really hits the midtones. OK. So again, everything is looking great. And then I'm like, oh, no, this skin, her skin is just horrible. This is not good. And I get into and I find myself in a scenario where, you know what? I need to take a bit of a closer look at this and, and then really work on the screen with just a, a much better view of this. So 
I can just jump into full screen. Now, if you didn't have this panel, you'd have to use some shortcuts to jump into full screen. But there's a dedicated button on this panel that allows you to jump into full screen and use the different controls. Without the panel, as you decide to jump into full screen, you can't see your controls. You have to go back and forth, toggling out of full screen to see your controls, make an adjustment, toggle back into full screen to make sure it looks right, toggle out. Oh, it's, it's, it's a pain. So having this button here, let me move myself on the screen again. I'm just gonna flip back over to this screen and then I am going to hit the viewer. So it's gonna bring it up full screen like that. And we can see, whoo, her skin does not look good at all, but I know I'm not on the correct node for, for this for this skin touch up. So I'm just gonna hit next node because it was two nodes over. So I hit next node once, next node twice, and I'll go over here and just warm her skin back up like that. That's getting better. Yeah, now we're talking because we want it to look natural. So I'm just Roll it towards that warmer side of the color wheel. OK, and then I can say, you know, what? let's just give it a little bit more vibrance and hit this color boost and just scroll that up. And it's really allowing me to just attack exactly the areas that I want to attack in the scene without having to be looking down at the, the, the tools inside of the app. I'm literally just just having a feel, if you will, far as how this this particular edit should go. And then I'm going to go into this mid de mid level detail here, which is going to put a little more detail on her skin, but not too much, because if I go too far, then she's going to look really, really sharp. And we don't want that. So I just cranked it up way too high. Want to just reset that easy, very quick. You just tap on the button or tap on the knob and it'll do a total reset. So daggum simple. So let me go in here one more time. Mid-level details up just a touch. Boost her skin temperature. Not too much. Not too much. And saturation on her skin. There, we're good. And then we'll just hit the viewer button again. Pop out. We're back to our regular view. Go back into the viewer. Let it play a little bit. Yeah, so my friend is focusing the camera. Hit stop, play again. When it gets on a sharp frame, I'll stop right there. Let's go back just a touch. There we go. We stop right there and say, you know what? Let's just dial that skin warmth back just a little more, but not too much. And Boom, there, we are good to go. I love this device, y'all. This, this, I, I really need to sweet talk Queen Pruitt into letting me buy one of these for myself. <laughs> Better yet, how about you all sweet talk Queen Pruitt and see if I can get one for myself. I, 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 I could use this in my workflow. I'm doing more video, especially stuff with the schools and the sports teams. Uh, they've been wanting video footage and I've been having some fun with that and having a tool like this was so much easier on me. Uh, so yeah, I, I if, if you're doing a lot of video, I highly, highly, highly recommend this. You can get the Black Magic Design micro panel on their website or on Amazon or pretty much anywhere online that sells photography and video gear. At the time of this recording, it is about 860 bucks. So yes, I know that is a quite an investment for some of you out there. So that's why I said at the beginning of the show, this is not a device that is for everybody. It's just not. Um, but. I find good value in this. And quite frankly, I would really love to put this into my kit and help speed up my particular workflow when it comes to working with video. Downside of this, there is one con, you know, well, there's actually two because there's no new node button on here. The other con is this is only compatible with DaVinci Resolve. It's only compatible with DaVinci Resolve. OK, so. If you're a Final Cut user, you're a Premiere Pro user, you're you're out of luck. You're not going to be able to do that. So you spend 800 bucks on this this piece of hardware and you're thinking, man, now I got to spend another $300 for DaVinci Resolve Studio. No, you do not. 
This will come with a license to the full version of the Venture Resolve as well. So you're getting pretty good value right out the box right there. So I highly recommend this. Check them out uh, again. We'll put some affiliate links in our show notes so you can take a look at this. But Blackmagic, thank you all for sending this over to me and letting me try this out. It's pretty badass. All right. That's going to do it for this week's episode. Thank you all so much for hopping in and joining me each and every Thursday. Do me a favor, subscribe in whatever podcast app you use. And also be sure to tell a friend and tell an enemy about hands-on photography so we can continue to grow the hands-on photography community. Any type of rating that your, your podcast app allows you to do, please give me a rating there. It really does help us out and help boost us up so other folks can discover the show. Really do appreciate that support. Shout out to my man, Mr. Victor, for making me look and sound good every daggum week because boy i stumble a lot and you continue to just make this look Mwah. thank you my man you're great give me a follow on the social medias i am ant underscore pruitt on pretty much all of them um there's twitter there's twit.social on mastodon I, I, i've been hanging out over there so give me a follow over there and also i'm still on instagram at ant underscore pruitt all right until next time folks hey y'all safely create it dominate and take care hey i'm rod pile editor-in-chief of ad Astra magazine and each week i join with my co-host to bring you this week in space the latest and greatest news from the final frontier we talk to nasa chiefs space scientists engineers educators and artists and sometimes we just shoot the breeze over what's hot and what's not in space books and tv and we do it all for you our fellow true believers so whether you're an armchair adventurer or waiting for your turn to grab a slot in Elon's Mars rocket, join us on This Week in Space and be part of the greatest adventure of all time.